Christmas morning, everybody busy doing something. Who we're fitting this coming? We're going to come back with that conversation concerning pandemic stress that's coming up around the corner. So stick around. But before that, we touch on the most important topic of the reopening of schools. Term number two is around the corner. Of course, the children, they've been having a good time. Christmas, pastel, getting to sleep late. But very soon, uniforms on again and... They're heading out, at least for the Form 4s, Form 5s. And we're hearing talk now of the Standard 5s heading out in the mix to get themselves ready for the SEA. The date already been called early next year. So there's lots happening. It's very fluid. Lots going on in that regard. And to shed some light this morning, we welcome and, of course, wish compliments of the season to the president of Tutor, Antonia De Freitas. She joins us now on the Zoom line next to the beautiful Christmas tree. Yes, good morning. So how are you? Compliments of the season to you and to your viewers. Fantastic. I want to get straight into the action and, of course, same to you and your family. What's the current position, uh, tutor's position on the reopening? Uh, are the schools ready? And more so, are they ready to accept the Standard 5 students? I know that would have happened last year on a small scale. I know they went out to do the exam also face-to-face. -face. What's the status there for the Standard 5s? Well, and, of course, our, our bigger students. Three, four questions rolled into there. One, the term begins, so our teachers are expected to resume duty, either physically for those of those teaching forms four, five, and six, or remotely for those teaching the other classes, the lower level in the secondary school and the primary school. As to whether the standard five students are ready to go out, there is, of course, the anxiety of being able to get into the classroom and prepare for the essay. However, there is also a lot of trepidation on the part of both parents and teachers as well as the students because of the current health scenario and mindful of the fact that a large portion of those students would not be vaccinated. Additionally, as to your question as to whether the schools are ready, whilst our primary school principals in particular would have been checking periodically on the facilities, we know for a fact that in many instances where there was work that required to be done, infrastructure work that was required, that work was not necessarily completed. And so we wonder whether it would be completed in the instances where it has to be done in time for the school or the return to school for students of Standard 5. Um, in February, of course, there's the issue of provision of sanitization equipment and all of the necessary things. Schools, both primary and secondary, have not yet received the full amount of funding that they required. Funding is always a challenge. And so for both primary and secondary schools, as we approach term two, there is concern again about being able to provide the necessary sanitizers, the soap, the wash things, to maintain the scanners, some of which malfunction at the end of last term because of constant use to replace them, to ensure that you have the necessary signage. These things require funds. We have not been able to raise funds in schools as persons would be accustomed to doing for the last two years. And so we must rely on funds from the state in order to get those things done. Unfortunately, we are not seeing that funding coming as it should be. Additionally, in terms of readiness, we know that the Ministry of Education partnered with the Minister of Health to establish a district medical unit that is supposed to assist in instances where you have suspected cases of the COVID-19 virus and ensure that the necessary testing and so is done. We have seen out of last term's experience with the secondary school and we anticipate it will continue. We have seen that that unit or those units in the districts, one, because they are not staffed with a large complement of medical personnel, they tend to be stretched. Obviously, they are stretched because of the number of reports. Additionally, that makes it difficult to get the tests back in a timely manner if a person has to do a PCR test and therefore the diagnosis that okay the person is positive or negative is delayed with a larger number of students out but with the same number of persons in that district medical health unit 
we hope that the systems will be more effective so that even if they're not going to up the human resource, at least the process of testing and getting testing results back and then ensuring quarantine would be more efficient to minimize the risk to the persons who are on the compound. Let me ask you, I know that obviously some of what you mentioned it's not ideal. I mean, whose job scenario is the most ideal at this point in time? Everyone will have their particular concern. But my question is, will this and everything you just mentioned impact the quality of teaching and the approach and the general wanting to get the curriculum and get these students ready, more so for exams? What's the mood of your teachers when you speak to them under the current umbrella of, of disorder and, and obviously lack of funding? You know, Jason, last term and, and even before that, our teachers have been working nonstop for the last two years, even albeit remotely. Last term, the secondary school students and the secondary school teachers went out. And the, the, the effort that they put into reaching the students who did not show up for physical classes when they were supposed to show up, the effort that they put into continue preparing students for the examinations both at the primary and secondary level, it was tremendous. And of course, we must commend them for that. So in terms of the willingness to continue with their jobs and their responsibilities, that is there. That will not wane as stressful and as tired as they are. And as you said, it's not always the ideal situation. But the difference between times past and now is that there is a health situation that can severely impact the health of the teaching and non-teaching staff, the students and the families of the students. That is the reality. And if we don't have these significant mitigation measures in place to ensure safety, then we're going to have problems. For example, very quickly, in the secondary schools, um, from four, five, and six being out, albeit not all of them on the same day, we have social distancing of three feet. Everywhere else is six feet. In the classroom is three feet. Um, and that means that obviously students in a class of 30 will be split up into different spaces. The teacher has to either run back and forth between the two or three classrooms where she has a class, or the reality is because some schools don't have the technology, the smart boards for everybody to see, some children don't have the devices pro working properly, the reality is you have a group that's left unsupervised. And so manpower, and availability of the substitute teacher program that the ministry promised, that kind of manpower to do the supervision to assist with student discipline, that is challenging more now than ever. That is challenging the way we are able to deliver the curriculum effectively. And we anticipate that when the primary school students go out, a similar situation would obtain in a primary school where you have 30 students in an SCA class, for example, and for social distancing purposes, you have to split that class, group, spread it out. That school, that class doesn't have a mic. You might have two or three standard five classes. How are we going to work that realistically to allow for maximum curriculum delivery? I'm not saying that we're not going to do it, but it's there are going to be challenges that will impact on student morale and student performance. Not all schools have the resources, unfortunately, to function as ideal environments. High-performance schools, yes, but not necessarily the ideal teaching and learning environment. Let me find out from... What we've put to the Ministry of Education, as recent as the meeting we had on Friday the 10th of December, and um, we were to see. Let me ask you, before we wrap things up, what's the vaccination status of teachers, if you know the stats at all? And more so, what's the conversation like between the union and teachers? Because I'm watching a development out of Dominica, our neighbors in the Caribbean up north, the Nature Island, where their union are encouraging their teachers to, quote, do the right thing, those who are unvaccinated, so that they can return to face-to-face -to -face classes there in Dominica. Uh, what's the union's position there with that conversation and what's the status of teachers if at all you know the numbers.